Hi, I'm Kyle Austin, a master's student in entomology at Cornell University. This is the first video in a multi-part series on do-it-yourself entomology. Throughout these videos, I'll be going over the basics of collecting, preparing, dissecting, and identifying moths, among many other things. Eventually, I'll cover how to dissect male and female genitalia, which is crucial for proper identification of many species of moth. But not all moth species need to be dissected for an ID. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to identify certain moths just by careful examination of external structures with a good camera or microscope, as well as how to separate males from females. For some species, parts of the genitalia or other diagnostic structures near the tip of the abdomen are visible without dissection. Cimarista is a genus of nododontid moth represented by three common species in eastern North America. Cimarista albifrons, Cimarista canercosta, and Cimarista lucidus. As you can see, the three species look very similar externally. However, males of these species can easily be separated by examination of the eighth abdominal sternite. Before we begin, we need to make sure what we're looking at is in fact a male moth. I use a specimen manipulator like this to rotate the moth under the microscope so I don't accidentally damage it. The most surefire way to set a moth is not by looking at the antennae, as many people might think, but rather by examining a structure called the frenulum. The frenulum is a bristle-like coupling mechanism on the hind wing that hooks into a small pocket on the underside of the forewing to keep the wings locked together during flight. Male moths always have a frenulum composed of a single bristle, like you can see here. Females will have two or more of these bristles. Now that we've confirmed that this one's a male, I take a small but firm brush to gently brush away scales to observe the shape of the eighth sternite. A small paintbrush like this one works well for this purpose. It may be slow initially, but eventually scales will fall off and you will see one of three distinct U-shaped structures. Here are the three common eastern species side by side. Some other species can be told apart by close examination of the antennae. Two species in the Noctua genus Feltia, Feltia trichosa and Feltia subgothica, are very similar externally. Both are common fall flying species in eastern North America. Without a large series of spread specimens on hand, they can be difficult to tell apart. There is no confusing the antennae, however. The Sensilia and Feltia trichosa are long and curved, whereas those in Feltia subgothica are much shorter and straight. Female antennae have even shorter sensili. Still other species can be told apart by structures on the legs. Here are two pure white tiger moths that are also commonly confused in eastern North America, Hyphantria cunea and Spilosoma congrua. Hyphantria cunea averages smaller than Spilosoma congrua, but intermediately sized specimens can be difficult to tell apart. The key in separating these two is in the tibial spurs. Spilosoma has two pairs of tibial spurs in the hind legs, as you can see here. Hyphantria has only one. That concludes our first video in DIY entomology. Stay tuned for the next one, where I will cover the different methods of collecting nocturnal moths.